for those of you that are like me, and a lot of you are, and a lot may not admit it, but don't you feel like you fix the same things day after day, week after week, and you're trying to come up with something different? Well, my decision to make this uh, dish tonight was based on the fact that my sweet husband was kind enough to go to the grocery store yesterday. Now, when he got over in the meat section, and I don't know about y'all, but uh, I don't like a lot of frozen meat, so I always look for the rotten meat, you know, the one with the pink ticket that says that they're selling it quick because it's almost at the expiration date. Well, guess what? Ain't nothing wrong with it unless it's brown, and then you really don't want it. Just You just bypass that piece. But normally, for the most part, it is nothing wrong with it. So my husband calls me on the telephone and he says, uh, Jeannie, now knowing that I am a, a thrifty money saver now in this, in this period of my life, but anyway, he calls me on the cell phone and he says, Jeannie, he said, uh, I went to the grocery store and I got a few groceries so that you didn't have to worry about it tomorrow. I said, well, that's nice. I said, what did you get? He said, well, I got a London broil and immediately I went, oh, cause that's a tough piece of meat. I love some ribeye. Now, I don't know about y'all. I, I, I salt and pepper that, uh, put a little meat tenderizer, slap it on the grill, make it medium rare. Mm, 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 mm. That stuff will melt in your mouth. But anyway, he goes and gets a London broil. Now, knowing what the price of London broil is in the grocery store, I brace myself for the worst news ever at how much that he has bought this London broil for. Well, he informs me that the London broil cost $17 and something. And as I began to sob uncontrollably, not really, but anyway, he, before I could say anything, he said, but I got it on sale and I didn't pay but $11 for it. So guess what? We're going to do a segment on London broil and how to cook it and how to make it or at least attempt to make it tender. Okay, so after searching the internet for quite some time, I came up with a recipe that is kind of consistent with a lot of the other ones on the internet. So we're going to give it a try. Okay, so back in my day, uh, when I used to work at the fire station, a lot of the guys at the firehouse had their own special recipe for London broil, a.k.a. speed bump. That's what everybody called it in the fire service. And so you're wondering why they call that speed bump? Well, the reason they call it speed bump, because no matter how you cook it, you can bake it in the oven, you can pan sear it, you can grill it, it don't matter, put it in the crock pot. By the time that stuff gets done and you sit there and start chewing on it, you done chewed yourself into lock jaw. Next day you wake up and you got to take three Tylenol because your jaw hurts so bad. So let me send you on over for a list of the ingredients, and then when you get done, come on back. Okay, now that we have the ingredients together, i got to put my handy-dandy microphone down so that I can show you what I've come up with. Okay, all right. So here, here's my marinade. I got, I got um, the soy sauce and I got the, um, the garlic. I put more garlic in it because I don't know about y'all, but I love me some garlic. Uh, there's some olive oil, some soy sauce, Worcestershire, and guess what? I didn't have no rosemary. The rosemary I had to leave out of the picture. So anyway, um, I mixed all this together. You know they, you know how they do on the um, on the Food Network. Uh, you try everything it is that you're gonna eat. Well, I don't know that I want to try this. It's got oil and stuff in it. Anyway, I'm gonna try it anyway. Let me see. It's a little tart, but I think it's supposed to taste that way. All right, so so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this to the bag being said let me get my handy dandy bag okay ziplock it's the way to go all right let, let me get my meat now i really hope that this works all right a big piece of meat all right in the bag oh oh yeah it did Woo. all right so there it is and um i'm gonna get my my trusty marinade here hang on I don't want dripping grease everywhere. All right, we're going to pour this right on in here. Now, according to the directions, 
It's supposed to marinate for two hours. Now it says to push out. Let me move all this stuff. Look, this ain't no pioneer woman, and it sure is hell ain't no Martha Stewart. So we're gonna wing it right here. So I'm gonna try to push out as much of the air as I can. Oh, oh. You know how that goes. All right. So there it is. I got the little garlics. And let me. I need to get some on the other side. Let's see. Let's see about the garlics. All right. Now, there it is. So now it says to marinate this for at least two hours. So I'm gonna chunk this in the refrigerator, and I'm gonna sit down and enjoy a nice cold one and watch some. Uh, TV. So when we come back, I'm going to take you out to the grill and we're going to see just how it turns out. Okay. I got my handy dandy camera woman, my sister in law, Christy, and she's going to help me film this segment. Hi. Okay, she says hi. So anyway, I got my steak in a bag that we discussed earlier and we're going to put it on the grill. Let me clean, let me clean the grill up because your grill has to be clean. Clean the grill up. I'm going to char boil it and then I'm going to turn the heat down. Now remember the key is you got to remember the key is you've got to um do it just right on the grill. It's not to cut a steak, it's the way you you cook it. All right, so let me get my steak out and we're going to put it on the grill. All right. Mm, the yum. steak is on the grill. Mm, yummy. So we're going to let that cook on that side for like four minutes and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to let it cook on the other side. Now, I'm kind of peculiar and I don't know about y'all, but I like your grill marks. You gotta be, they got to be crisscross. So after a couple minutes, I'm going to move it um, to the six o'clock position and, and do the grill mark. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so now we're ready to take uh, the London Roll off the grill. So, we're going to take it. Woo, look at them pretty grill marks. So, we finally we finally got the London Roll off the grill. And we let it rest. You put your little aluminum foil over, let it rest for 5 to 10 minutes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to move it over onto the cutting board and see what we have. Now, Gregory is apparently over here waiting on um waiting on me to slice it pork in hand so let's take a look all right oh. so take two we're back to cutting the steak let's see what happens here oh that looks good pretty that looks like it's gonna be mighty tasty now for those of you that don't necessarily it's a warm red center for those of you don't that don't like that you can leave it on a lot longer, or you can actually uh, put it in the oven and heat it a little bit if it's too rare for you. But anyway, I like it being that rare because to me, it's more tender. Uh, it's more tender. So anyway, with that being said, that is the episode of uh, my London Roll, and it is really tender. I mean, it, it is like really tender, and I, I'm not having to really h work hard to cut it. Like but butter. anyway, like butter. Hey, y'all, this is Jeannie on JOTV. We're going to go in and see what the folks think of the dinner tonight. Okay. First, we have the sister in law, Christy. Christy, tell us what you think about the meal. It's pretty good. A and how about that uh, London roll that you got there? How is that? I haven't eaten it yet, but I'm waiting for it. I'm okay. ready. All right, let's talk to Stuart. This is my brother in law. Oh, brother-in-law don't eat steak. So let's move on to the next person. <laughs> let's go around the table and speak to Gregory. How was you? How was it? Well, the first plate was good, but I worked towards my more corn pudding. But the the London brew felt like a rubber meatball. Anyway, he is a liar. Uh, let's talk to my husband, honey. What do you think? Oh, it's fabulous. He was going to say that even if it was a lie. Anyway, all right, I'm going to sign out for now so I can eat my dinner. Anyway, this is Jeannie signing out from JOTV. Oh, God. All right, bye, y'all.